I found out that my birth parents are married to each other and I have full siblings. I was adopted at three months old. I had a dysfunctional family growing up, but I was cared for and loved. Both of my adopted parents passed away in separate car accidents. My dad when I was 17 and my mom three years ago when I was 24. I had a semi-open adoption, but my birth parents requested my adoptive parents stop sending them photos and updates about me when I was less than a year old. I had a vague idea of who my birth parents were. I grew up knowing their names and I had several photos of them. I did a DNA test and was matched with three full siblings, which shocked me. I was always told they were young and that they barely knew each other and wanted to further their education. About three months ago, I decided to Google their names and I found their social media. Turns out they are married to each other now. I stalked them on Facebook a bit and it seems like they have a relatively happy life. I ended up reaching out to my birth mother via Facebook, telling her that I would love to get to know her and that I've had a great life and that I have no expectations. She took a month to respond and when she did, she said she was surprised that I had reached out and to please not contact any of my siblings as they aren't aware of my existence. I didn't respond for a few days, but I ended up just asking her why she chose to give me up and why she never told anyone about me. She responded and said that I was a NICU baby. She and my birth father were 17 when I was born and they weren't prepared to raise a disabled child. She said at the time that they were under the impression that I would never live independently and that they weren't in a place to have a special needs child. Oh my goodness. That is, they were, oh, whoa. Damn, they literally said, let's just get rid of this one and try again. <gasps> the ableism. I was again shocked. I definitely was in the lower percentiles for growth until puberty. But according to my grandmother, by the time I was eight months old, I was hitting all of the markers for regular mental development. I have a master's in mathematics from a tier one university. I was an athlete in high school and I never had any issues in school beyond being really horrible in art class. I'm married with a child. I'm a fully functioning adult with a successful career and a family of my own. And it hurts to know I was given up on because of the slight chance I wouldn't turn out perfect. Part of me feels like I missed out on a life with siblings. I was raised as an only child. And that I could still have a chance to know them and love them. And that my daughter would have a chance to have cousins. My youngest siblings aren't even in elementary school yet. And I could have a normal sibling bond with them or at least be part of their lives from a young age. And I wish that I had that chance. I am not angry at my birth parents for giving me away. I don't hate them. I'm hurt, but I'm not angry. I'm angry that they've requested I not reach out to my adult siblings, and I'm considering doing it anyway. Am I the asshole for telling my wife that pregnancy hormones aren't a blank check for verbal abuse? My wife is currently pregnant and about six months along. This is her first pregnancy and a planned and wanted pregnancy. The first trimester was great, but around the time we hit the second trimester, she became very aggressive. If I cook dinner, it's not just wrong, but it's, quote, fucking disgusting. Get this away from me. If I clean the house and put things away, I get yelled at for putting things back because she now wanted them put somewhere different. I've been yelled at for waking up for work, for playing music she didn't like for making coffee and she didn't like the smell and a hundred others <laughs> it's gotten to the point where there is at least one explosion per day where i'm yelled at and insulted i've tried to speak to her about this but every time she hand waves it as it's just the pregnancy hormones it makes you crazy you'll just have to deal with that i'm well aware of the effect that pregnancy hormones have but i don't believe it justifies the level of verbal abuse coming my way finally the other day i told her after after a particular rough yelling session, I said that pregnancy hormones don't justify yelling or abuse to your partner. This wasn't received well. It led to more yelling and her calling me an asshole. So, <laughs> am I the asshole? No. I, I'm, just, I'm just curious, like, what she was like towards him before this. Yeah. Because it's interesting to me if she's not able to even reflect and see that her behavior is not very nice. Mm -hmm. Was she already kind of spicy to him and then she got a little bit more spicy and so she doesn't really see the difference? Yeah. Or it's, was it like a total 180? It's a good point. So let me, there's one one little paragraph here after the question. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. We get an edit? Well, it's just an uh, added paragraph. It's just, just, just some additional. Okay. And to try to answer some questions I expect to come up. No, we have never had this issue before. 
Speaking with the doctor, she had no specific risks or complications over the average. I have asked her in her calmer moments about how she is feeling about the pregnancy, and she is saying she is excited. Pregnancy is an awkward time period, but she is very excited for the baby to come. Honestly, as someone who's not been pregnant yet, obviously, like, we can't relate here, but I have a sister-in-law, and I had a conversation. You know, she's had two kids now, and she loves being pregnant. And so I said, Amy would you be my surrogate? And my brother was sitting there and he goes, absolutely not. And I go, why? And my brother goes, Amy gets mean when she's <laughs> pregnant. I guess she is just like actually terrible. So I'm, as you're reading this, I'm laughing because I'm like, this is literally probably what Amy was like. And I think it's hard because like, oh, get this away from me. It's disgusting. She's probably just trying not to throw up. But I do completely agree. Like, you being pregnant is no excuse for the verbal abuse I'm getting. Yeah, I mean, what he said to her was very fair from yeah. what I'm understanding. Obviously, you're not the asshole. It's time for couples therapy. Am I the asshole for refusing to allow a photo of my future mother-in-law's miscarriages at my wedding? It's not, I shouldn't laugh. It's not funny at all. I, 26 female, am planning my wedding to my fiance, 27 male, in a few months. Everything is going great and I love him so much. I can't wait to spend the rest of my life with him. He loves my family and I, for the most part, love his. A bit of a background, fiance has a much older brother. While my future mother-in-law was pregnant three times in between them, all of them resulted in late miscarriages and stillbirths. As a result, mother-in-law put all of her motherly love and attention on my fiance. He had never tried a fruit or vegetable before I met him because his parents never made him when he was young and he had grown up assuming they were gross. I got him to try some and he loves them now. As we were planning our guest list, we consulted our families about which and how many relatives we should invite. Future mother-in-law asked that we invite, invite, Fiance's dead brothers and sisters. When we asked her what she meant, she said she wanted us to put up a frame photo of the dead babies in the pews at our wedding ceremony and then save them seats at our reception. Not the reception. <laughs> I was horrified. First of all, we were trying to have a fairly small wedding to start with and had a beautiful, intimate venue. We can only have seats for 30 to 50 people, and I would like these places to be for our friends and family, not people who have never met either of us because they are dead. Why did she have to write it like that day? <laughs> Fiance agrees that three of the 50 seats reserved for dead people is too many. He suggests that we compromise and just let mother-in-law put up all three photos in one seat. Personally, I think it's gross and weird to include any of them. We're starting our lives together. We want to have a family and it almost seems like a bad omen, but it means a lot to her and it's a fairly small ask. Fiance's parents are paying for 75% of our wedding and this is the only request she's had. So am I the asshole for still refusing? My mother has lost her fucking mind. My whole fucking family is crazy. I dealt with a lot of death and grief in my life and like obviously so is my family. So I feel like we just don't go about things the way that we fucking should. For example, I got a text from my mother two days ago that my aunt is like dying. It's my great aunt, she's really old, but whatever. The text literally said from my mother, I hate to bother you girls with bad news, so I didn't want to tell you earlier, but I call her Jessica. Jessica is now in hospice. I was like, First of all, I have the family group chat muted, so I didn't even see this till like way later in the day. I'm like, mom, why the fuck did you just send me a text message? Uh, Jessica's been down bad for six fucking months and you just decided, mm, I'm really just like not gonna tell them. To be fair, I get it. She doesn't wanna like bother us with bad news because we did have a summer every time I answered the fucking phone, someone else was gone and I was like, oh, forget this. But like, how are you just gonna send a text like that? You're not even gonna like call me? That's already pretty bad and like low key traumatizing. And then I get a text from my cousin the next day and said, Jessica done died. She done died. And I got a text from my mother saying, Jessica's on the other side. Other side? Other side? I'm like, why can't we just be normal? We're so unserious about things that are 
actually pretty fucking serious. I don't know. I feel like that's just kind of what happens when you deal with death and grief. I, you're probably like, no, bitch. That's really fucking weird. Then it gets even worse. I added my mother to my group FaceTime with me and Sissy, which is like mistake number one, because I forgot that my mom just loves to talk about like depressing fucking things. And my mom is like, okay, I, I didn't want to tell you girls this, but like... I think I'm just gonna tell you. She's like, your distant relative didn't wanna be here anymore. I go, what the fuck do you mean didn't wanna be here anymore? She goes, he's in the psych ward. I go, okay, lovely. I go, mom, why are you telling me? She's like, oh, I know you hate bad news. I can never share bad news with you. I go, no, it's cause you used to call me 24 seven and tell me about a random man who I've never fucking met had cancer. That's why I don't look, allow her to really tell me bad news anymore. If I allowed her, so like, give me bad news all the time. She would be telling me about the mailman who doesn't have a ball on him anymore. She's like, lost one of his fucking balls. I don't know what it is. I feel like it has to do with like getting older and like age, but she loves to just fucking be the barrier of bad news. So immediately I'm like, okay, well, is everything okay? She's like, yeah, no, everything's fine. I just wanted to call you and update you. I was like, okay, this is horrible. No, and I know these are heavy fucking topics to be like laughing and joking about, but like, I don't know. I just feel like I've dealt with a lot of death and grief in my life where at this point it's just like, I'm so numb to it, unsensitized to fucking all of it that I can't even get over the way that my mother says things because every time I'm like, did you really have to fucking say it like that, bitch? My fiance likes cuddling with their stuffed animals more than me. Throw away for obvious reasons. This is going to seem strange, but please read because I really do need some advice on this. I've been with my fiance for three and a half years and we'll be getting married in the next few months. We honestly have never had any issues worth mentioning until last September when we took a trip to a sci-fi slash fantasy convention and ended up coming back with a gigantic, think large, beach ball sized Tachula plushie. See? T-H-U-L-U. At first, we thought it was funny and cute. We even named it Kevin, if you're curious, and made up a funny voice that it would use. Over the course of the next few weeks, however, they began to take it all much further. They started to come up with a backstory for it. They would hide it throughout the apartment to try to freak me out. Over time, they really started to refer to it in a way that you'd talk about your pet or something, even to the point of scolding it for various mischief that they'd accuse it of. No... They've now started to do the same with other gigantic stuffed animals. A manatee named Horace, a duck named Anthony. Initially, I thought this was just some silliness, but I'm worried that they're taking it too far. I've mentioned in passing many times how strange it is that we are treating stuffed animals like people, but I'm only met with silence, followed by insistence that, quote, they are little people. Okay. <laughs> A couple of weeks ago, this all came to a head when I've started to have nightmares about these things. The most vivid one involved the Tachula taking over people's minds and forcing them to paint their worst fears. I woke up in a cold sweat and I was so confused that I actually Googled the doll to make sure that there wasn't anything weird about it. Anyways, I told them about it, again, in the context of how dumb it all was, and they got mad that I would accuse Kevin of doing such a thing. Not Kevin retaliating in your dream. <laughs> I think that they actually got mad enough that they're shutting me out. When they lie down on the couch for a nap, they grab the doll, but push me away when I try to lie down with them. Things are fine when we're out and about, but when we come home, they're always going back to that damn doll. I've thought about throwing it away, but I honestly don't think they'd ever forgive me. I just wish that they could see what this damn thing is doing to us when we're at home together. Does anyone have any ideas of what to do? I need a picture of Kevin and Anthony and Horace. I'm so confused what a chachula is. It's It gives like anime, right? Oh my God, it is terrifying. That's what's coming up when I search the word. A chuch I should probably figure out how to pronounce this. Everyone is probably screaming at me. <laughs> Cthulhu. 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 A Cthulhu is a cosmic entity created by writer H.P. Lovecraft. It was introduced in his short story, The Call of Cthulhu. It's characterized as the priest or old leader of the Old Ones, a species that came to Earth from the stars before human life arose. So that's a Cthulhu, guys. It does seem like that would come speak to you in your dreams. I'm a little scared. Now I'm going to have nightmares about a Cthulhu. Would this be a deal breaker for you? I don't think I'd ever be in a situation where this would have to be something I have to think about. <laughs>
<laughs> Basically, <laughs> Carrie's implying that because she is queer. No, I literally, I literally just mean like if <laughs> Jenna were to like if Jenna suddenly like gave all of these like stuffed animals like personalities and started naming them, but talking to them as if they were characters in our lives when we were at home, I'd be like, it's not funny anymore. I'm scared. But what if she continued? What if she would not give it up? What if she was? I don't so- know why. What's going on? They are little people, especially if they're haunting me in my dreams. I think I'd be like, hey, where's this coming from? Yeah, I think you gotta like knock it off at a certain point and just be like, okay, babe, like I, I get it. I'm kidding. But if she's actually serious about this and like this is now becoming like a whole zoo, like you got the Cthulhu, you got Horace or Wallace, the whatever, <laughs> Wallace and Gromit, the the whole cast. You got everyone. Were they always like stuffed animal people though? Because I know like people are really into like the squishmallows and they collect yeah, them. Yeah, so there's like, a big community out there for those. And like that's fine, but as soon as you start giving them like real personalities beyond a bit, I that's don't know. a little concerning. When I was younger, my brother and I were at my cousin's house in her room playing when my uncle walked in and he started talking to my brother, but my brother doesn't know how to speak Polish, which is the language that my mom's side of the family speaks, but he can understand it. So my uncle started to make fun of him and teased him. He then asked my brother to recite the Polish alphabet. My brother couldn't do it, so he started laughing and so did my cousin, but I snapped back and I asked him if my cousin could say the English alphabet and she got to about H when she stopped. And my uncle finally stopped using my brother. Am I the asshole for telling my friend that our daughters are no longer doing homework together and her kids' grades are hers to manage? My daughter has a best friend named Sarah. They are both in fourth grade. The two girls would do their homework together at the school's after-school program. School ended at 2.30 and I would pick up my kid at 4-ish. So they had time to do work. The issue started when I got a call from the teacher about cheating. Both girls' homeworks were identical. Every sentence was the same word for word. I explained that the girls do their work together and she made it clear that this isn't just helping each other, it's basically copying at this point. She can't tell if either girl is struggling from the homework, but she knows one girl is due to test scores. She told me that she was going to talk to the other parent also. I informed my daughter that she needs to do her homework by herself, that she can do it by herself after school, or play and we will do it when she gets home. She decided to do it by herself. It's been two weeks of this and overall seemed fine. The other girl's parents confronted me today. She asked why the girls were not doing their homework together. I explained the cheating situation and I thought that the teacher had talked to her. She told me they weren't cheating and just helping each other out. That her daughter's math scores had gone down since they stopped doing homework together. I informed her that the kids are no longer doing their work together and her kids' grades are hers to manage. If she is struggling now, then she needs to deal with that. She called me an a-hole, so. Am I the asshole for creating a rule that when I host an event for my family, my sister's son is not allowed to come? I treat my family to dinners out and other events fairly often. My sister Charlotte recently moved closer to me and our parents. Before then, I only saw her and my nephew Leo for holidays. I invited Charlotte on a family dinner out and it was an absolute disaster because of Leo. Charlotte called me while she was driving to the restaurant. I could hear Leo yelling in the background, bad sign. (laughs) Charlotte asked Leo to wait a few minutes until she was done calling me and then she would give Leo her phone. Oh, I think we all know where this is going. He wasn't doing anything to actually discipline Leo. My nephew's behavior was no better inside the restaurant. Leo is eight, and yet he was acting like some kind of two-year-old. He was jumping up and down the booths, yelling to get Charlotte's attention. He threw bread at another patron's service dog, not the service dog. (laughs) My dad took away the bread after Leo ignored the first warning. Leo threw a tantrum. People were staring at us and I would have been too. This behavior was completely unacceptable. While all of this was happening, Charlotte just said things like, oh Leo, you can play on my phone and wasn't doing anything to actually discipline my nephew. While we were outside leaving and Leo was with his grandparents out of earshot, I told Charlotte that this could never happen again. I told Charlotte that she needed to get Leo under control and until she does, he is not welcome at any events in public that I host for the family. That's super fair. Charlotte said that I was a horrible person for excluding a child and to think about how I would have felt as an eight year old to know I wasn't welcome at family gatherings. If Charlotte doesn't want to hurt Leo's feelings, then she cannot tell him about the family events that I host or actually do something to discipline Leo. Our parents understandably asked to not get involved in our disagreement. Friends are divided because some are saying that Leo shouldn't even be in restaurants until Charlotte gets him under control 
and others claim that what I described Leo doing was normal kid behavior, so. Am I wrong for telling my sister-in-law that she's freaking annoying? She did not say freaking y'all, but we're just gonna leave it at that. So my sister-in-law has been staying with my husband and I for the past month after being evicted. She says they sold the building she was living in and I have no reason to not believe her. She works nights and my husband and I work days and we also have a son with ADHD. He's currently unmedicated because they haven't completely finished the evaluation. So my sister-in-law sleeps from 6 a.m. when she gets home until 2 to 4 p.m. That's around the time my husband and I pick up our son from daycare and get home from work. But my sister-in-law is the type that needs to make comments about everything. But it's not in the typical I'm trying to start a conversation sense. She just constantly repeats what she saw or heard. So every day she'll come downstairs and say something like, I just woke up and came down here and you were with Christopher and he's in a bad mood and I don't know why. Christopher is our son. Or I just went to make coffee and noticed there's no cups. Am I wrong for telling my sister-in-law that she's freaking annoying? She'll say things like, I went to make coffee and noticed there's no cups and I thought maybe I should do the dishes. Or, my alarm went off so I came down and didn't know you'd be home already, but you are. Or, I was going to get leftovers because I just woke up, but then I noticed you sitting here and you look angry so I wanted to be a good sister-in-law and sit with you first. And trust me, I know she could just be socially awkward, but these are the only things she ever says. Things she sees or hears and stuff I already know because I'm always in the same room. So for the past week when I've gotten home, I've asked her specifically to give me space. I've told her multiple times I don't want to talk and I want to be alone. Well, yesterday when I told her I wanted quiet time, her immediate reaction was, I just got up and came downstairs and you're in a bad mood and I don't know why and it's confusing me. I snapped at this moment because she refused to leave me alone and said maybe it's because I've asked you to leave me alone several times so I can have space alone but she refused because you're freaking annoying. This is the split second decision that changed my life. So one day I decided to break up with my partner. The timing just wasn't right. I was only 20 and I just wanted to go out and party. I had a full-time job and on top of that, I was in a full-time student program for aerospace engineering. I called her and asked if we could meet at the science building and to this day, I don't know why I picked the science building. I think it was because it was close to her dorm and close to the parking lot so I could get it over and done with and then dip as quick as I could. And as I saw her walking towards me, I looked at her for the last time as my girlfriend and at that point, I started reminiscing about our relationship. There was all the ups and downs, how it began and at this point, it had only really been about six months. And I thought she was walking towards me and she was like a hundred and odd feet away at this point. I had started dating her because she was marriage material. She was mature, beautiful and super fun to be around. And anyone would be so lucky to have her. It would have been so hard to find someone like her. And not only were our sense of humour super similar, we also really complimented each other as well. I would hate to see her cry and it would have been so hard to find someone like her again. Actually, do you know what? It wouldn't have been hard at all. It would have been absolutely impossible. So I was thinking, yes, it's going to be hard to find someone, but at least I'm going to get these next three to four years to myself. And after that, I'll just have to find someone as perfect as her to spend the next 40 years with. But then it hit me that I'd be trading like 40 years of pure joy for three to four years of just immature fun. And that was when I realised I was about to make one of the biggest mistakes of my life. And it was only when she got about 30 feet away from me that I decided to change my mind. So fast forward, we are now 28. This woman is now my wife of three and a half years and is currently carrying our first son. And now I just couldn't be happier. My boyfriend asked for a paternity test of our child. As soon as the results come and show that he's the father, I'm leaving him. I'm a new mom to a baby boy who is my pride and joy. And though it's been a roller coaster adjusting to taking care of a baby, the past few months had been great. Tiring, but great. I have a boyfriend of three years who is the first person relationship wise I have ever loved and I thought we were doing great as new parents but also as partners. Friday he came home and asked me for a paternity test. Just like that. It was completely out of the blue. I was putting away the dishes and he asked for one. Like he was asking what was for dinner. I'm a different race from him but our child apart from the skin tone is literally his mirror image from pictures I had seen of him when he was a baby. I was stunned when he asked and his reasons were that he had to be sure he was the father. He had to have that certainty. All I remember as he was speaking is just immediately feeling pain. The man I love doesn't trust me. He would actually believe that I would sleep with someone else, cheat on him, and then try to pass off another man's baby as his. I have never ever given him reason to think I would cheat on him. I've tried to be transparent and communicated and it wasn't enough. 
He told me he would give me time to think about this, that he wouldn't go behind my back and do this test, but for our relationship to move forward, he needs to be 100% sure. He repeated this because he, in his words, needed me to realize how serious he was. After thinking for a couple of days, I'm going to allow him this paternity test because I have nothing to hide. I never cheated and would never cheat on him. Once it's proven that he's the father, I'm ending it, leaving the same day and I'm going to try my best to be a cooperative co-parent with him. In the meantime, I'm coming up with my exit plan, a place to live and a lawyer to work out a custody arrangement in court. I couldn't tell my father or my friends right now because they would go nuclear and my first priority is our child. I hope the test was worth it to him. I'm not asking for advice or reassurance or to explain his side. I just, I'm just realizing this part of my life is now over. What a way to start the year, huh? I realized if I blindsided him like that, I would be doing the exact same thing he did to me when he asked for the paternity test. I planned to ask him to talk, but I also didn't want him to think I was trying to get out of the test. So beforehand, I booked an appointment at two different paternity test locations. I asked him to talk when he came home, and I made sure our child was at my mom's. I told him that whatever happened with this talk, the paternity test had been booked and would go forward. I basically asked him his reasoning, and when he started having doubts about paternity, was it a previous relationship? Did cheating happen? He said it was about a week before he asked me that he started having doubts. He said that he was on his lunch break one day, just reading articles, and he clicked on an old article about a man who found out his three kids weren't his after like 20 years. This led him into a rabbit hole of podcasters and YouTube videos that encouraged men to ask for paternity tests. While he thought those podcasters were idiots, he said that the paternity test was an exception. He said his reasoning was that some women have done this before and he wanted to be sure. He said, you know it's yours because the baby comes out of you, but how do I know? The test gives me that assurance. I was hurt by that, but I decided to explain how I felt. I said that for him, it was a rational request, while for me, it was basically him saying that he didn't trust me. It was him saying that he believed I would cheat on him, get pregnant, have him emotionally, financially, and physically support me during the pregnancy and birth, and basically lie to him when he raised another man's child. I told him that I understand that women had done this before, but the fact that he thought I would do this to him is what bothered me. I told him the truth that when I was angry, I had planned to leave him and that I even went looking into a lawyer, a co-parenting plan, and a new place to live. He was stunned that I would leave for something so small. I found that to be a weird kind of irony that he believed issuing an ultimatum about a paternity test and basically accusing your partner of cheating was something small. I told him I was really hurt by what he said and I was still hurt, but if he needs this peace of mind, that we would do it. He asked what about our relationship and I told him I didn't know. We did the test two days later, got the results back after three. He opened both of them, and to the surprise of no one, he's the dad. He was visibly relieved when he read the test, and I don't know why that hurt more. It's been about two weeks from the results, and I'm still really hurt. God, I sound so pathetic. I feel pathetic. I thought the results would maybe relieve some of that, but it didn't. It's like a switch clicked when he asked for the test and I can't find a way to click it off. I'm pretty sure postpartum is playing a part in this because all I do is cry and I wasn't like this before. I have also moved into the spare room, something he was against, but I felt bad because apart from when our son is awake, I'm sad all the time. I'm looking for a therapist and he wants to do couples therapy and he's looking for one. He already has a few appointments booked just to try them out. He wants to move on, marriage, more kids in the future and go back to where we are and thinks that our relationship is now stronger. While I'm just thinking, our relationship right now is weaker than a person on stilts. I don't know if I would say we are together. The physical affection is gone. We rarely talk about anything but the baby. It's awkward. I'm trying to find a way back to where we were and I can't see how. I'm going to try to fix this and try therapy, but I just have this feeling that this is basically a sinking ship. I hope I'm wrong. I want to very much be wrong. So she has a final edit and it says, I left. Things have gone downhill and under advisement. I can't really discuss it until things have been settled in court. I guess I'm really a cautionary tale on what can go wrong. Please, if you have concerns with your partner, discuss things beforehand, especially before you have a child. Organize Thank you again for your different Legos perspectives. Hoping to have everything settled eventually. Am I the asshole for walking out with my girls when my mother-in-law excluded them from the family photo album? Disclaimer, this is not my story. I will list the source in the caption of this video. I'm a 36 mother of two girls, nine and five. I met my now fiance, 38 male, two and a half years ago. He's a good man, treats my girls well, and loves them. My future mother-in-law is a generous lady, truth be told. His family are respectful and helpful. We visit them a lot. After we got engaged, I pretty much considered this my extended family. However, my mother-in-law tends to do things that either intentionally or unintentionally hurt my feelings. Example, when there's a family dinner at a restaurant, we're not invited. On Christmas, my girls didn't receive anything from her, while other kids in the family got gifts and cards. Also, all the kids in the family got a trip once a month, but my girls never participate. Mother-in-law's excuses were, I forgot. 
This week, my future mother-in-law was doing a family photo album and was gathering family pictures from everyone. My sister-in-law, her kids, brother-in-law, and his kids, and so on. She called and asked if I could send her some pictures. I thought this was nice of her. I sent them pretty much after my call with her ended. We were invited to her house. The entire family was there to look at the photo album because it was complete. We took turns to look at it, and when it was my turn, I was stunned. Turns out she picked the pictures that just had me and her son, not my girls. Although we took tons of pictures. The four of us, my girls were excited wanting to see the album, then asked why their pictures weren't there. I didn't even want to think about how they felt. I was caught off guard, otherwise I wouldn't have let them look at the album. I asked my mother-in-law why she excluded my girls, and she didn't even reply. She just ignored me. My fiancé stared at me. I felt awful. I got up, took my girls, and walked out immediately. Everyone was confused. My fiancé followed us, then he left. At home, he told me that I shouldn't have walked out before dinner and I should have just ignored the whole thing because who cares about a stupid photo album? I told him that it's a symbol of family. The girls felt left out when all the kids' pictures were there except for theirs. Although I sent her four pictures of us as a family, he said his mom didn't mean it and promised that this will all change once we get married and said he'll get everyone in line so I shouldn't even consider this a problem and that my girls are the light of his life and that's the only thing that matters and that I was overreacting over a family photo album. My mother-in-law called and was upset, saying that me walking out like that was disrespectful to the entire family. When I told her about what she did, she bluntly said, I don't want to lie to people. Those girls don't relate to me in any way. She said she loves them and will treat them well. We'll host their birthday parties if I want, but she won't call them family. I argued with her over this. I hung up on her since she didn't think she did anything wrong. Did I overreact 